All right, what's up coach? Welcome back to the channel. Now, um, today's video, I'm gonna tell you a story about uh, something that happened a long time ago. Um, and I think this will hopefully help you if you're a coach um, who wants to grow their business. Um, and honestly, I feel like the last year, because I've taken on so many conversations with coaches, oftentimes when I get on Zoom calls, I feel like I'm a therapist. <laughs> And I'm listening to a lot of just different things that have happened to people. There, there's been a lot of trauma. There's been a lot of unfortunate things that have happened to coaches that I've worked with. Um, you know, a lot of coaches have had that I've talked to that I even I've worked with have had bad childhoods or no one believed in them or, you know, no one wants them to start a business or people think it's too risky or whatever the case is. And, and we always have this kind of feeling like people are fighting against us to, to go into this industry um, because most people from the outside looking in don't think that you can succeed being a coach. Like that, that's, unless you're like a pro coach, that, that's the average, the average person thinks that, that, oh, if you're just gonna be a coach, like, you know, what, what are you gonna do in the future? Like that, that's a pretty normal question. People have asked me that in the past. They're like, oh, like you're doing that right now. Like, what are you planning on doing, right? And I always took that personal uh, when people told me that. Um, there's people who still tell me that, <laughs> which to me is crazy because I've been doing it for so long at this point. So at this point, that doesn't affect me. Um, but here's the thing, you know, a lot of coaches that I talk to, they hang on so like with, with this really tight grip to the past. And I hear it. I hear this in conversations I have with coaches all the time. They'll be like, well, yeah, you know, when I was younger or when I had this injury or when this happened, you know, now that is affecting me at this age. And, you know, I talked to someone who was in their 40s yesterday um, and he was telling me something. I'm not going to go in deep into his story, but. He's telling me something that happened when he was 10 years old and he's in his 40s now and i kind of stopped him and i was like hey you know that happened there you know over 30 years ago why does that still have power over your life and he he didn't have a response and this is the thing is like we always try to tell ourselves these these stories that happened and it's like it always feels good too, to be like oh yeah i'm facing adversity and and all this and like at the end of the day though this is what i've realized and i have had to mature a lot because if you go watch older youtube videos that i posted at the very beginning of this channel like i held a lot of uh resentment towards people that uh doubted me or towards people that said certain things um and there's a lot that I could, you know, that I could talk about with that. And like, I, I've had to release all of that. I've had to realize like, no, oh, like none of those people are, are waking up in the morning and, and praying <laughs> that I fail or hoping that I fail. Like no, no one, no one's doing that. Right. And, uh, and if they are, then, you know, they have serious problems. <laughs> uh, but the, the thing is, is like, you know, I've had to let go of a lot. Um, there's a lot, trust me. There is a lot that I used to like really hang on to. And, and I would use that to really like drive myself. Um, but at the end of the day, that's not, that's not going to be a good reason to succeed. Cause you're, I think you're succeeding for the wrong reasons at that point. So again, I'm telling you my journey here. All right, I'm gonna give you a specific example. So when I was in, seventh grade i'll try to shorten this story so it's not too long but when i was in seventh grade i was absolutely terrified of speaking um, i was really nervous i was really shy and that year i was going through puberty and i had this speech that i was supposed to give and uh i remember like waking up that morning i like really didn't want to go to school i was trying to fake like i was sick so i could get out of it and uh i ended up going to school and before I got to school, I was practicing in the mirror, trying to do the speech. And like over and over, my voice kept cracking. And I was like, gosh, I hope this doesn't happen when I give my speech. And sure enough, like right when I walk up there, like the third word I said, all right, 
my voice cracked. I remember like this very vividly and I hung on to this for a long time. Uh, you know, everyone was laughing at me. People were pointing their finger at me. Uh, and I was, I was in my mind during that moment, I was like, gosh, I am never going to do public speech again. And that one moment, I, I let that one moment have a lot of power over me for many, many years after that. Like, in, it happened again in high school. Like, and I had a, a speech I was supposed to give. And my teacher told me, if, like, they told everyone, if you don't make this speech, like, you're, you're going to lose, like, I think it was like 30% of your grade. It's like, if you just don't do it, if you want to skip it, you can. And I skipped it. And that like really affected my, my grade that year because I was afraid of what happened when I was in seventh grade. <laughs> I was a little kid, right? And even later, right? I remember this very vividly. After college, when I started my business, I was like, it, it was crazy. Like that still had an effect on me because when I was training kids at the very beginning of my coaching career, like when I was in college, like... I would want to say certain things in my session, but like I would be blocked of saying those. I was blocking myself of saying those things because I was afraid that I would either stumble through my words or I would say it the wrong way. And I was very self-conscious of my voice because of something that happened in seventh grade. All right. And then fast forward, even when I started uh, creating YouTube videos, like I have another channel that is it's called onlinesoccerskills.com. Um, and then there, there's another channel I have. It's called uh, Athlete Mental Coaching, and I have this channel. At the beginning, when I started doing YouTube videos, I was absolutely terrified, absolutely terrified, because this thing in the past still had a lot of power over me at, as an adult, right? Now, I know like if you're listening to this right now, there's something that has a lot of power over you that you just haven't let go yet. And I can't force you to let go of that. I'm telling you though, like I completely let go of that probably a year ago, right? Which is insane. I, I, I held on to that for a long time because in my mind, I was always like, oh, well, you know, if I ever run into one of those people that was laughing at me, like I'm gonna prove them that I became successful. And I don't know, it's just this stupid mindset. It's a terrible mindset. Um, and, and it was like, oh, I'm doing all of this to, to prove to my old self that I can do anything. Right. And again, not a good mindset to have. Right. What I could have done is, you know, the older I got, I just could have been like, oh, that was just like one stupid thing. And then just like completely moved on from it. I didn't know. And you know why? It's because my ego was attached to it. And this is the thing I've, I've really been drilling with coaches that I work with is we have to start removing our egos in our business because when you do that, you become too, when your ego is too big, you become too prideful. And when you become too prideful, kids can see straight through that. Parents and your, like the customers can see straight through that. And when your ego is too big and it's too built up, then you attach yourself to little things too much. Like, the story I told you, right? And because I've like fully let go of that now, like just just for example, doing this video right now is a thousand times easier. Um, doing doing any sort of marketing, anything that used to be outside my comfort zone, super easy now, because like I'm not I I'm completely free of that one stupid situation that I strapped myself in for decades like literally decades. I mean, it's insane. But the thing is, I know I'm not alone with that. Like you're watching this and you're, you have one little thing that you've, uh, attached yourself to, and you have chosen to not let go of it. And I think one of the most powerful things that, that has helped me is just realize that, you know, Number one, I'm going to mess up. I'm going to make mistakes. I'm going to keep messing up. I'm going to keep making mistakes in my own business. Um, I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. Um, and if I can really detach myself from the outcome that I want, right, then I put a lot less pressure on myself. And if I have less baggage in my brain, meaning 
I'm not uh, holding on to things from the past. Those things are completely free. If that's the case, then I can move forward with, with what I want to do in my business with a lot more confidence because I'm not, I'm not tied down to anything, right? So I hope that makes sense. I know this is kind of a weird video, uh, but there's too many coaches I've talked to at this point that hold on to things that happened when they were younger. And like, I don't know your specific situation if you're watching this video. But the thing is, is like it, when you when you give when when you let something like that have too much power over you now as an adult, it's going to absolutely jack you up, and it's going to jack up your business, and it's going to jack up your confidence to change and do bigger and better things that that you can do. Because like you know your potential, that there's zero cap on your potential, and this, this is something also I've been learning. Like the, my potential is, is not this glass ceiling. If I want to keep learning, if I want to keep improving, if I want to expand and get better and better, I can. And so can you like there's, there's zero cap on potential. Um, but oftentimes we, we hold on to things from the past and that does put a cap on most people's potential. Cause they're like, gosh, like I'm still thinking about this old thing that happened and, uh, I can't get away from it. And so, you know, how's that going to affect me over the next, you know, when I try to do this next business move that I want to do? And it's like, those are the things you have to be able to let go. So I hope this video helps. No, it's a little bit different. Um, but it's a big problem that I see a lot of coaches have. Like most coaches I talk to, when we dig into their business, something like that will always pop up. And uh, I'm here to tell you, I have struggled with that so much in my business. There, there's been a bunch of other things outside of that one example. Um, and may, maybe I'll talk about those in future videos. Um, but yeah, so hope this helps. And uh, uh, just try not to give that sort of stuff any power over you in, in the future. And, uh, and I feel like that can absolutely help you out. I know how much it's helped me. Um, and there are still other things that I'm trying to, you know, free myself of and, and get this mental baggage out of my system. Um, I'm still in the process of doing that. So that's it for today's video. Hope this helps and, uh, I'll see you later.